Hey, it's Ryan with QLZ, and we are back in the green room today, and we're well, Nita, you're on the road because you're touring right now. We're talking with Nita Strauss. Uh, you're out with your solo band right now. People might know you from formerly of the Iron Maidens years ago, Demi Lovato, Alice Cooper. You pretty much do everything. So how you doing and how's the road today? I'm great. Uh, we're in beautiful Omaha, Nebraska. It is a very nice day out. Uh, I've got my dog sleeping here. I've got yeah. my coffee. <laughs> everything is good. <laughs> She's like, why'd you whip me up just to do that? I know. What's it like touring with a dog? Oh, it's great. Uh, my dogs are good road dogs. Um, they are, they're super, super chill. So I, I can imagine it would be hard with other dogs, but mine are good at it. Yeah. Mine's a rescue and he's like 70 pounds. So I'm not sure how well he would do constantly moving. Yeah. Ours are both rescues too, but they're, okay. they're just used to moving around a lot. Oh, that's awesome. So you're on the road with your dogs. Like I said, I got to see you Saturday night uh, up at the castle theater in Bloomington. Uh, I got to see you lines at the gate, heart sick. It was a phenomenal show. And one of the things that it takes took a little bit for me to get used to is going to see somebody who does instrumentals for the first like 20 to 25 minutes of their set. Cause you're so used to somebody coming out on the mic and yelling and getting everybody rowdy. The band just comes out there and tears it down. And then you come running out there with your guitar. So for you, what is it like captivating an audience where they're so you know little talking, especially like right away as soon as you get on the stage? You know, I kind of take a page from the Alice Cooper book a little bit where he doesn't talk to the audience at all, actually. You know, okay. I, I talk a good bit, just maybe not like right at the very beginning. And uh, and I think that Alice is able to captivate an audience and hold them in the palm of his hands without saying anything at all. You know, so we just really try to like come out like a freight train and, you know, kick things off and get people riled up with our playing. No, it was awesome. And it was something, it was a cool experience, cool new experience taken for me. Cause again, you're so used to somebody to come out there and getting you, getting you rolling right away. You just come out there and rock it. But when uh, Casey got out there now, I don't know a ton about Casey. I know you said she's in the band Deadlands, um, TikTok. I am not a TikToker. Um, I got to mm -hmm. try to figure out how to use it, but she comes out there. She's just a powerhouse. So like, where did you find her? And for this being, her, she told us this is her first tour. Um, she's so confident up there you can tell like doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of nerves from the outside so what was it like finding her and then uh, having her on tour with you right now oh yeah i found casey on social media um she's also on instagram and facebook and all the other the other places but uh she's very big on tiktok and i was looking for somebody that could do a lot of different voices of course i have you know so many different vocalists mm -hmm. on this record from david draymond to alice cooper to elisa white gloves to lizzie hale and dorothy and anders from in flames and chris motionless it's like how can i have one singer do all these parts i'm going to need like six singers on the road with me yeah um and that's where someone like casey comes in that's truly a chameleon she can do you know a male vocal or female vocal or a growl or a high pitched scream or soaring clean vocals, you know, she really can do it all. So we were very, very lucky to get her. Yeah. And she doesn't seem nervous like up there at all. Oh, she's fearless. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night in uh, Wisconsin, she jumped off the stage during the Pantera cover that we closed the set with. Yep. And she started a mosh pit by herself in the <laughs> middle of the, in the middle of the room and got the whole center of the room in a circle pit. And then she left them there to pit by themselves and came up and finished the song with us. She's, she's absolutely fearless. That's awesome. She's doing a hell of a job up there and getting to hear it's cool getting to hear her sing Pantera, hearing a female sing Cowboys from Hell, getting hearing a female do uh, Dead Inside from David Draymond, because, again, it kind of gives the song a different feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she can she can sing all the parts, but she's not a parrot. You know, it still yeah. sounds like her. She's you know, she's not mimicking. You know, she's she's singing everything and singing it right. But it still has her style and her vibe to it, which I really love. Yeah, she's doing a hell of a job, which is which is awesome to see out there, especially for her first tour. Now, Victorious is the song that's out there. It's a song that constantly gets stuck in my head because it's such a good anthem song. It's probably something with Dorothy's uh, voice as well. It's a song that we just got added here to QLZ, and it's one that's top 30 for you already. It's I mean, it's flying up the chart. People are going crazy for this song. So um, it's one that, like I said, we got to spin in right now on QLZ. So how how'd the uh, the collaboration with Dorothy come together? Is she somebody you'd want to work with for a long time? Well, first of all, thank you so much for the ad. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. it. It means a lot to have this song have the impact that it does to actually hear it on the radio. So thank you very, very much. Um, Dorothy, of course, is, you know, we talk about powerful vocalists. You can't have the conversation without talking about Dorothy. Yep. And uh, this song, especially from the upcoming record, I felt like it was a great fit for her in particular 
because she is such a positive person, you know, she has spoken so openly about being encouraging to others and lifting others up. And um, I thought she was the perfect person to sort of send out this message of hope when at a time when a lot of other artists are writing aggressive music, and I have that too, you know, I've got yeah. a lot of aggressive songs on the new record. Um, but we we wanted to have something with a positive vibe and I thought she was the perfect fit for it. And from where she's come, like when I got involved in Active Rock Radio, I think Flawless was the first song out from Dorothy that really kind of hit Active Rock Radio. And to see, you know, see what you've been able to do, you know, coming from, you know, the Iron Maidens to, to Alice to you doing your solo thing now. She's another one where it's, you know, Flawless is a song out there. It's a good song. And then you have songs like Black Sheep where she's just really kind of this I don't give a fuck kind of attitude and I'm going to sure. be, my, be myself. It's awesome to see kind of how far she's come as well. Yeah, she definitely, I think, is like figured out who she is as an artist and what she wants to say and what she wants to stand for. And I love seeing that happen. You know, we all go through the struggle, you know, early on in our careers, like, well, what do I sound like? Who do I want to mm -hmm. be? And it's just, it's wonderful to see her having this like authentic expression of self and, you know, living her best life and making her favorite, you know, her best music. Yeah. And like I said, it's a song that just gets stuck in your head. So I'm, Probably before we got rolling, it was rolling through my head. I'm like, probably because I'm talking to Nita, but it's also a song that just gets <laughs> stuck in your head. It's a really good tune. Now, Call of the Voids, the new album out July 7th. You know, you mentioned Anders from In Flames. Uh, I think Marty Friedman's on this record. Lizzie Hale's on this record. What's it like pretty much just getting every all these different voices together and just putting them all on one album? It is a dream come true, honestly. I don't I don't really want to be in a band, you know, aside from my touring gigs, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't really have the desire to to be in a band and have, you know, one singer that we do everything with. Like I like the solo project. I like being able to work with different people and totally change styles, you know, and craft these different genres of songs that might not sound like they would work on the same album, but they actually do mm -hmm. all work on the same record. And uh, that's been the fun part for me is all these different collaborations. Who do you want to work with next? I know this, the album is just coming out here in the next week and a half, uh, July 7th. And again, there's a ton of great music to uh, to listen to, but I interviewed uh, Daughtry a couple of months ago and, you know, he'd worked with Lejean and he had just had worked with Lizzie and he had a great list of people that he you know wants to work with in the future. Who else is on your bucket list right now? Oh my gosh. You know, honestly, I haven't even given it any thought just because, this record is still, I mean, it's not even out yet. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, there's, there's an infinite amount of people of different genres, you know, I would love to branch more into, you know, the heavier side of, of things, you know, work with someone like Alex Terrible from Slaughter to Prevail. Mm -hmm. I'd love to work with someone like Daughtry. I would love to work yeah. with someone like Pink, you know, like, uh, I'd love to work on new music with Demi someday, you know, like there's not a lot of people that I don't want to work with put it that way that's good it gives you like you said an infinite amount of options and you always have people that you never run out of now you've had the chance to yeah. play the national anthem at rams games you've had the chance to be at wrestlemania so outside of working with a ton of phenomenal people you know in rock and metal you've been able to branch out and do some great things and and get you know some hope out there for us rock folks that don't always you know see a lot of rock represented in, in big events any other sporting events you want to be a part of? Obviously, you know, Rams games are a huge thing out in L.A. You've got a massive crowd out there for it. And WrestleMania. I mean, obviously, you know, the Super Bowl of wrestling. But any other sporting events that you're like, I want to go play there, too? Um, I would love to get to a Dodgers game and a Kings game because then I will have, like, all the L.A. sports okay. covered. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I've already played a Kings game. Uh, Dodgers game and a Laker game. Okay. Uh, because I've I've done the Rams, I've done the Kings, I've done NASCAR in LA, uh, I've done WWE. Uh, so yeah, I, I would love to just like wrap up the trifecta. Uh, I guess it would be more of a more than a trifecta, but just like wrap mm -hmm. up, sweep all the LA sports teams, and get the Dodgers and the Kings, and maybe the LA Galaxy too. Okay, what about the Chargers? Or is that a no since you're a Rams fan? To me, growing up in LA, uh, the Chargers will always feel like San Diego's team. Okay. Um, it's, it's not a knock on them. That's just like, that's how I feel. I used, you know, I grew up going down to Qualcomm to go to games and, you know, seeing other teams play the San Diego superchargers. Yeah. So for me, the Rams are my team. Awesome. All right. Just had to throw that out there. Cause it's interesting with two teams out in LA and it's like, I'm not sure if there's much of a, if there's any bitterness there between those two teams, but I'd say that's quite, that's quite a bit, quite a bit of things you want to check out and do. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say 
there's any bitterness. Uh, I just personally, if you ask me, I don't think LA is a city that needs two basketball teams or two football teams. I think we're better when we have one team to get behind, you know, because yeah. everybody, you know, I'm from LA, born and raised, and like I can say with a lot of confidence, people in LA are so self absorbed. You know, we don't, <laughs> you don't need to, too many things to distract LA people from themselves. Just give them one team to cheer, to cheer for and let that be it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, uh, Victorious is the song that we're spinning right now on QLZ. It's a top 30 hit already on rock radio. Uh, Call of the Void's new album going to be out July 7th, a week from this Friday. And uh, Nita, before I let you go, a question I have for you that I'm asking everybody that I uh, interview. I did this when I was in uh, Wisconsin for a little while working up there. It was a blog post, but it was asking people about their favorite complete albums of all time. You're no skip records. Uh, just put the album on and you're not skipping any songs on it. So uh, some of your favorite no skip albums of all time. Ooh, um, I have a few early in flames albums okay. on my saved on my Spotify that are like my sort of go to no skip. Uh, so like root root to remain colony clay man. Um, I listen to those like if I'm going to read something on the plane, like I'll just put that on like as I'm sitting and reading and uh, those are absolutely no skip from start to finish. Awesome. And again, now you work with Anders. Yes, now I have gotten to write a song that <laughs> sounds like old school in flames with the singer of in flames. So talk about bucket list pinch me moments. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, again, I'm looking forward to the whole record again. Uh, Call the Void. It's out July 7th. Uh, Victorious, the new uh, album out right now. And if you're listening to this, if you haven't seen Nita yet on the road, get out there, check out her, check out Lions at the Gate. It's a great tour. It's a lot of fun. And, and again, it's a cool experience to come in and just watch people jam on stage for 20, 25 minutes. It's just, it was a cool thing. It was a cool experience. And I'm glad I got to take that in Saturday night. So Nita, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And again, thank you so much for spinning the song. It means a lot.